Well, hello everybody, it's Mike here again, and the release of the RTX 4090, this chonky boy, it got these rusty wheels turning. And I wanna call out to all of those AMD users because I was thinking, what happens if you still have a 2600X? You might have looked at that 3600X a couple years ago and said, you know what, it's just one generation, I'm not gonna be upgrading at this point in time. And then you looked at the 5600X and you held off just a little, little bit longer. But now the 7600X is out there and there's a couple of little problems with that too because you not only have to upgrade your CPU, you also have to upgrade your motherboard and your memory. It's an expensive proposition. Look, you've saved yourself a ton of money over all these years by hanging on to that 2600X life raft for all it's worth. So maybe, just maybe, it's time to look into a new GPU. But what kind of performance increase can you actually expect from just a drop in graphics card update? Or is it time to ditch your processor altogether? And I'm sure 3000 and even 5000 series owners might be thinking the exact same thing right about now. Well, the RTX 4090 gives us a perfect opportunity to see which CPUs are showing their age and which still have some life left. I mean, regardless of the system you have or how much money you have to spend, the last thing anybody, anybody wants is to spend mega bucks on an upgrade, doesn't matter if it's a GPU or something else, and not get the most bang for their buck. So that's really what this video is about. Do you want to sort of maximize your GPU purchase by saving some money and sticking to your current system, or are you better off actually upgrading your processor before going on to a GPU. It doesn't matter if it's this generation or an upcoming generation. But speaking of updating, I think that Thermaltake might have something for you guys. Dimitri, take it away. The new Tower 500 by Thermaltake is probably the strangest looking mid-tower you might confuse with a 3D printer or a tiny vending machine, but have no fear. The triple glass sides reveal all the goodies inside. The front I.O. is plenty full for all your needs, and so is the interior with support for 360 radiators, massive vertically mounted GPUs and the bottom chamber for the cool fan eyes and the dynamic LCD panel on either side. The Tower 500, it's unconventional, but cool. Check it out below. Okay, with the bills paid, I wanted to jump right into the meat and potatoes of this video, starting with the system specifications. The biggest thing you need to take into account here is the fact that it was and still is almost impossible to get memory speeds above DDR4-3200 with tight timings on the Ryzen 2000 series CPUs. So we ended up prioritizing timings over raw bandwidth here. On the other hand, the 3600X and 5600X were run at 3600 mega transfers per second. Another speed bump that specifically Ryzen 2000 series owners have to watch out for is BIOS updates with X470 and X570 motherboards. If you're rocking one of those boards, you really have to take into account that a lot of motherboard vendors actually say that as of Agiza 1.0.0.3, you can actually experience performance regressions on 2000 series processors on those boards. Not only that, some features might be removed all together. You really, really need to keep that in the back of your head before you start updating the BIOS on your motherboard. So now with that out of the way, I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping here, and that's explain to you guys how you can determine whether or not your processor or something else in your system is bottlenecking your GPU. And it all comes down to graphics card utilization. If your CPU cannot process information fast enough, well, your graphics card, it just sits around there twiddling its thumbs, basically lowering its overall utilization. On the other hand, if your CPU is fast enough, all of your GPU resources will be used almost all of the time. And to show you what that looks like, I'm gonna sort of show you an extreme situation here. So a 2600X versus a 7600X. And at 1440p, you can see how the 2600X typically behaves. As a rule of thumb, I'd say anything under 80% typically indicates something other than the GPU is a limiting factor. The only games that get anywhere close to that are God of War, Warhammer 3, and Forza Horizon. So places where the 2600X typically perform the best anyways. And overlay the 7600X onto that and it's a night and day difference with every single game sitting above or near 80% utilization. But there is one major exception and that's Valorant. It's pretty obvious there's a game engine bottleneck going on here somewhere. 4K improves things by a bit for the 2600X with a lot more games nudging closer to that magical 80% mark and some even going beyond it. But even then, 
there's a lot of situations where the RTX 4090 is just sitting around not being fully engaged. Meanwhile, the 7600X sticks to high utilization right across the board, except in, you guessed it, Valorant. But anyways, with all of that out of the way, I wanted to jump right into 1440p performance results. Right away, there's some serious surprises right here. And yep, you're seeing this right. In Valorant, strapping an RTX 4090 onto a 2600X system barely gets you one iota more performance than a 10 80 Ti. The same goes for the 3600X. The card can really only stretch its legs with the 5600X and 7600X. CSGO, again, going from the 1080 Ti to RTX 4090 on the 2600X, and yes, again, even the 3600X, leaves a metric ton of performance on the table. And if you're wondering about the 7600X's shitty 1% lows here, well, this really boils down to memory timings. With Far Cry 6, I was expecting a bit more of a GPU bottleneck but that actually didn't happen. And there's almost a linear progression from the 2600X all the way to the 7600X. One thing is for sure though, in Doom, just moving to an RTX 4090 gives GTX 1080 Ti owners a pretty big boost, even if they're using a 2600X. At the same time, if you're rocking that processor or a 3000 series CPU, you should really look into upgrading to a Ryzen 5000 series at the very, very least. The next couple of games follow that exact same pattern with the RTX 4090 giving 2000 series owners performance uplifts over the 1080 Ti. Perceptually, you might feel like you got your money's worth here, but the benefits are actually infinitesimal compared to what performance could be with a simple CPU upgrade. What really amazes me is we're still seeing some pretty major CPU limitations with the 3600X on games that are traditionally thought of as being GPU limited. That just goes to show you how powerful something like the RTX 4090 really is. And this will probably be repeated with AMD's RDNA 3 as well. Even if you want to skip this generation of GPUs altogether, stepping up to a 5000 series processor instead of a whole new AM5 platform would be a pretty good investment while they're still around. Yet there's still some games that are a bit GPU limited, which see the RTX 4090 essentially double the GTX 1080 Ti's frame rates. But even here, there's still quite a bit of room left in the tank, especially when jumping up from the 2600X or 3600X to a newer processor. It isn't as much as all the other games, but it's still there. And well, now that you see how things line up with a relatively low resolution, I mean, for the RTX 4090, 1440p is a low resolution, we're gonna move things up to 4K to see if that makes any difference whatsoever. In Valorant, nope. As a matter of fact, the gap between the 1080 Ti and 4090 is pretty much identical to the 1440p results. But that's the only game here showing behavior like that because even CSGO starts getting into a bit more of a GPU bottleneck situation at this resolution. In the next few games, we start seeing some tangible benefits over the 1080 Ti even when it comes to the 4090-2600X combo. But with a simple CPU upgrade to a 5600X before grabbing a new GPU, you'd be getting much, much higher overall frame rates. And I have to bring up the 1440p results again here too, because in these games, the 2600X and 3600X post almost the exact same numbers as they did at that lower resolution. That means they're still limited in some way, even at 4K. With the rest of the games, we're finally seeing a heck of a lot tighter results where at least the 3600X and 5600X get pretty similar, if not identical results as the 7600X. The 2600X on the other hand does lag behind in a bit more games, especially with 1% lows, but there's a quantum leap in performance over the 1080 Ti equipped system. We're talking about an almost quadrupling of frame rates here, but it's still hard to recommend holding onto a 2600X or any 2000 series processor for that matter, if any type of GPU update is in your short term or mid term plans. What's really amazing is that even at 4K with ray tracing enabled, some games are still a bit CPU bound. This seems to be more of an engine limitation than anything else since there's really no way a processor should be influencing things at this detail level and at such low overall frame rates. And yet the vast majority of ray trace games behave exactly like we'd expect with the graphics card being the only real limitation and the CPU taking a back seat. So that's pretty much it, but what is the final takeaway here? So first of all, if 
if you're a 2000 or 3000 series CPU owner, well, upgrading to a 5000 series processor is going to be a huge deal. You should actually do it before even thinking about upgrading to a new GPU. A great example of that is the 2600X. Upgrading to a 3600X is not a big uplift. On the other hand, going to the 5600X will give you a quantum leap in gaming performance provided your GPU can provide the necessary frame rates. More importantly, 5000 series CPUs are hitting super aggressive prices now too. And even if you aren't planning on upgrading your GPU right now, right at this second, with a single BIOS update, a much more capable, in gaming at least, 5000 series CPU is a simple drop-in upgrade for older Ryzen platforms. It'll prepare you for the next round of even more powerful GPUs because if history is any indication, the 4090 will ultimately lay the baseline for next gen's 80 series cards. And I guess that brings me to the million, or I guess billion dollar question if you're AMD. What about the 7000 series? I really don't think that especially for 2000 series and 3000 series owners who want to stick on the Ryzen platform that the 7000 series is even worth it. Personally, what I would do is I would pick up one of those really well-priced 5000 series chips right now and then just maximize my GPU budget. It will give you the most bang for your buck as we saw with every single one of the charts in this video. So I guess that's pretty much it for me. I am Mike with Hardware Canucks and I will definitely see you in the next one. Take care guys.